It's a Farm Friday. Let's talk San Diego Padres. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked On MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, baseball writer for Sports Illustrated, and thank you for making this your first listen every single day. And today's episode is brought to you by Vroom. With Vroom, you can buy a car entirely online and have it delivered straight to you so you never have to go to a dealership again. Next time you need to buy a car, grab your phone, go to Vroom.com, and check out thousands of great cars. So... San Diego Padres, it's kind of fun to do a farm, I say say fun, it's interesting to do a farm Friday for this system because they've just, they've made so many trades and they've shipped so much talent out of this system. And so this is the first one I can think of where you're really doing a disservice if you don't talk about, um, if you don't talk about the rookie league right now, and then even guys who are unassigned, so like rookie ball and unassigned guys. Uh, The four top prospects, I'm sorry, the, the four top draftees, are all top prospects in this system. So right-hand pitcher Dylan Lesko, you'll remember we talked about him coming out of Georgia, uh, was looking to be the number one prep pitcher available in the class, um, had an elbow injury, had to have Tommy John. So he is currently injured. He is not assigned right now, which means he does not count towards that 180-player limit that you have. Um, Robbie Snelling, number six prospect. He was the competitive balance round pick. Um, also out of high school, also unassigned right now. So not, not a, accounting for a spot as well. And then Adam Mazur, second round pick, number 11 prospect in the system um, out of Iowa. Uh, another top prospect there, you know, top, top 10, top 15 who is, as I understand, not necessarily playing right now, not counting against that 180. And part of it's, we've talked about this before, the draft being so late in the year means it's incredibly difficult to get these guys ramped back up for competition in a safe way where you can actually get something out of them. Uh, Fourth guy is right-hand pitcher Henry Williams out of Duke. He was the third round pick. He's, uh, I've got him around... 22nd or so in the system and uh, he's also injured as well so he's he's rehabbing right now again don't believe he's assigned to an affiliate maybe technically in rookie ball but either way he is he is rehabbing well we hope to see him next year and when you look at uh, the guys that are playing right now uh, a lot of your your a ball guys there's actually a surprising amount of talent in a ball so like I mentioned a lot of the strength of this system is very low. Uh, You know, recent draftees who were prep guys, international signees, things like that. So Jackson Merrill, which depending on who you ask, is either the number one or number two prospect in the system, but the shortstop uh, is in single A right now. And just kind of a quick recap on him, uh, 27th overall pick in 2021 out of high school, 6'3", 195. Uh, and last year, 30 games in, in rookie ball. This year, 10 games in rookie ball, and then 36 in low A. So he was an extended spring until the complex league started, and then now in low A. Uh, combined between the two, 349, 396, 531 slash line. So looks pretty good. Um, when you break it down, Obviously, some significant differences. He was obviously advanced for rookie ball. The rookie ball numbers this year, 433, 452, 700. Kind of ridiculous. So glad they got him in low A rather quickly. So in low A, Lake Elsinore with the storm, the Lake Elsinore storm, 333, 386, 500. Five home runs, six of 10 on stolen bases. And when you look at a Jackson Merrill going into the season and he lost some time last year with the hip flexor and things like that. But the big thing here is plus raw power, right? He kind of he put on a, some healthy weight his senior year, kind of like a, like a final growth spurt. Um, but because he played in Maryland, he never really got high-level competition. So 
They've been working with him on handling high velocity. They've been working with him on elite spin, handling all of those things, kind of understanding those. Still a little bit raw when it comes to things like that, a little behind the eight ball. And then this is one of those warm weather versus cold weather kind of things. But he's still working on it. I feel good about it. Um, when he's when he's going for home runs, he's typically pulling it to get it out. Uh, again, I think that's something that'll change as well. I think he'll get a little more um, spread across the field for his power as it comes in. Uh, but um, defensively, there's a question about will he outgrow shortstop, and part of that's because he's six three, almost you know six three two hundred, and that's just on the bigger side for a shortstop. Now, flip side of this is we've seen some huge people like six seven O'Neill Cruz, uh, Ellie De La Cruz, uh, play shortstop and play it defensively at a high level, and so not saying he's going to have to move. But if he does, I feel like he's got the speed, he's got the hands, he's got the arm strength, above average arm strength, where if he had to move, he could move to a lot of different positions. He could play third, he could play second, he could play short, you could probably get him in the outfield a bit. Now this system, um, I don't necessarily know if you're going to need him in the outfield or not. There are quite a few outfielders between uh, the big league level with a fellow you may have heard of named Juan Soto as well as um, as well as well prospects that we'll talk about. But you can move him around. I could see him, intelligence-wise, being the kind of guy that played a lot of different positions. Um, number five prospect in the system, outfielder Samuel Zavala. So 2021 or 2020 IFA, 6'1", 175. What I like about him, so very smooth swinging outfielder. Uh, it's kind of like a like a whip coming through. Doesn't have a ton of just like absolute force and just strength behind it. But uh, the bat speed and the, the whip combined with kind of the natural swing, the natural loft in his swing means you're going to get power production out of him. Uh, probably got him as above average raw power right now. Um, contact wise, I, I still think that's a little better. I still think that's an above average contact thing. Uh, in the DSL when he debuted last year, um, hit for both average and power. He hit 287 or no, sorry, 297, and he had 25 extra base hits in like 50 games, and then almost as many walks as strikeouts—32 walks to 36 strikeouts. And you look at him now; uh, he spent 10 games in rookie ball as well, and then 24 in low A. 227, 346, 443. 27 strikeouts to 16 walks. Still adjusting a little bit to to the higher level of pitching. Uh, Four home runs, 10 extra base hits in 24 games. So kind of like the ratios there. Uh, He's got, speed is fine. Speed is average. Uh, He's got above average arm. He plays above average defense. Very intelligent player. And so... Like, I'm sorry, very intelligent, very good instinctually as well. And so he's in center right now. I think he can play all three. From what I've been told, the Padres see him as a true center fielder. Uh, but again, just a little bit of time before you're going to see him. He just debuted domestically this year. He's 17 years old still. So plenty of time to come up. Uh, one more guy here at this level. Uh, right-hand pitcher Victor Lazarga. So 2021 IFA out of Mexico, which isn't... Something you see a lot of these guys always make the transition over. 6'4", 180. Really interesting, like, uh, long and athletic, right? He is technically still a teenager. He's 18 He's eighteen years old in low A right now. 18 games in, 3'58 ERA over 83 innings. 81 strikeouts to 33 walks. Um, he's held his own against players older than him. Kind of have him profiled as of now as a back-of-the-rotation starter. We'll, we'll see what happens. He's got... Fastball sits low 90s. I feel like as he physically matures, that's going to go up a bit. He's got a he's got a curveball sits in the upper 70s. Average flashes of above average. Has a changeup that he throws that I think it could be above average. It's probably average right now. Um, still walks a little too many guys for me. I mean, 33 guys and 83 innings. It's like three and a half per nine or so. Want to see him walk guys a little bit less, but um, excited to see what the strength gains do there what the velocity gains do. Um, 
In just a second, high A and double A. A lot of really interesting players here and a lot of disparity as far as where these guys are rated. And I don't quite know who has it correct. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends with the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration. Uh, are you one of the people that think it's okay to drive stone? Like, what's the worst that can happen? You end up driving below the speed limit? I mean, it's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is your reaction times slow way down when you're high. You not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. And talk about a buzzkill. So stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. Because if you feel different, you drive different. If you drive high, you can get a DUI. Okay. So high A here, this is the, the Fort Wayne 10 caps. A uh, couple interesting guys here. And again, just a lot of disagreement as far as where these guys should be rated. And I just, I find it interesting how there's no real consensus on some of these guys. So right-hand pitcher Gyro Iarte, and I'm probably saying that right. Number eight prospect in the system. Uh, MLB Pipeline has him somewhere above 10. But 2018 IFA, he's 6'2", 160. And the thing here is explosive stuff, right? So, I mean, just has has some tools, has some weapons here. Uh, fastball sits 95 to 97. It was in the 80s, the mid-80s when they signed him. Uh, it has a lot of carry up in the zone. So it's a really effective, really good weapon up in the zone. Uh, uh, Changeup is around 86, 87, so it's got good velocity separation. A lot of late life to it. I think it can be a plus pitch. So nice little one-two combo there. Just like I said, explosive stuff. Uh, slider, mid-80s, has the potential to be above average. And so if, when that comes in, you're looking at uh, three-pitch mix right there. You're good to go. Um, very, very raw as a pitcher. And part of that is... That growth spurt that he went through, um, going from 6'2", 160 when he signed to 6'5", 200. And so, because of all of that, uh, control still a little off a bit. Fringy, fringe to average. Um, walks He walked 41 guys this year in 81 innings in Lake Elsinore. 5'3", 3 ERA, by the way, in 19 games, 16 starts. Um 95 strikeouts in the 81. So you can see the stuff is electric, but he also walks too many guys. Just kind of has to figure it out. Starting pitching prospect, not quite sure where he's going to fall on the spectrum. Um, I'm inclined to say somewhere between a 4 and a 5 right now based off of the below average control. If he can work on that a bit, you're looking at a guy who can probably come out to be a number 3 based on the quality of the tools, the quality of the fastball, and the changeup. Uh, to go along with him, another guy, again, lots of disagreement as to where these guys should go. So Jackson Wolf, lefty Jackson Wolf, um, I've seen one place has him at 23. I've seen one place has him at 15. So a lot of question here. 2021 fourth round pick, 6'7", 200. So big guy. And he's one of those funky lefties that I've talked about before. Uh, I think I mean, yeah, um, stuff isn't that overwhelming, right? But it's just tons of deception, and it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on. So he's so tall. Um, again, stuff's kind of average, but he's got really good command of it. And the angle it's coming out of his hand, the the delivery when you're 6'7", makes it hard to pick up out of the hand and makes it play up higher than you think it would. So uh, right now, spent the whole season in Fort Wayne. 407 ERA in 22 games, 112 innings pitched, 128 strikeouts to 41 walks. So again, you can see um, walks are a little bit high, but the stuff is just hard for guys to pick up. Doesn't necessarily have the velo, but deception. And so question is, when you face better hitters, are you going to be able to still get them out as a starter? Or are you going to be, you know, Limited to relief. Now, if he's a reliever, I think he could be a long reliever. He could be a three or four inning guy. It's just a question of will his stuff get guys out as he faces better competition. He's he's twenty three right now in high A. Not a, I don't imagine there's a ton of physical development left. So it's just a question of can you get this stuff to be good enough 
to get out hitters as you move up in levels. Um, speaking of moving up in levels, Double A, the Double A San Antonio Missions. Couple players here that again, no consensus whatsoever on where these guys should be. Um, actually, Noel Vera Vila is pretty pretty locked into the lower part of the teens. Uh, I've seen him 12, I've seen him at 14. 2017, 28th rounder out of high school. Just wild that we were taking 28th rounders back in 2017 out of high school and getting them in pro ball. 6'1", 165. I've got him as a like a back of the rotation starter or a middle relief guy. I think he's got... And the issue here is he's got a above average fastball and he has a really good curveball. It's one of the better curveballs in the system. I like this curveball. Changes above average, so a good mix of pitches. He just doesn't have great... Com- uh, I, I give him probably below average command and control. And so because of that, you're looking at, I mean, what is it right now? I think he's got 100 innings combined and uh, 60, I'm sorry, 72 walks. Like, command's just not great at all. And he's significantly struggled with the command in the four games he's been in double A. He was he looked better than that in high A. Not a lot better, but looked better than that in high A. But still, just an issue, you've got to get that command and control under control, got to find a different word for that. Get, you have to get the command under control so that you can take these fantastic tools, especially that curveball, and let them play. A um, couple outfielders here, Joshua Mears and Tirso Orleas. Um, Mears is a 2019 second rounder out of high school. Orleas is a 2016 IFA. Uh, but both of these guys, I feel like, have there's a path where you can see them contributing, right? So Mears is that we talk about every single um every single system needs this guy. 6'3, 230, tons of raw power. I mean 70 or 80 grade raw power. Um hit a 2021 spring training, he hit a, a home run off of a Rockies reliever at 117 miles an hour. But tons of swing and miss. Had a lot of injury issues last year. Not stuff necessarily connected. Uh, shoulder injury, concussion, COVID. Um, broke his nose on a bunt attempt. But um, this year, it's just been something where like he's got good, he's got decent speed for a big guy. Um, tons again, tons of power, but it's only as good as your contact tool is, and that's kind of the rub when you look at um, a Josh Mears. So. High A, he spent most of his time in high A. Out of 60 games this year, 52 have been in high A. Um, And in those 52 games, 90 strikeouts to 16 walks. Hit 14 home runs, hit 25 extra base hits, but just a ton of strikeouts. And so I just, I worry you're not going to have enough contact ability to use that power. You know, and wouldn't be the first time we've seen that come up. Um, Flip side with Ornelas is... Very, very good contact ability. Um, right now in double A, 100 games this year, 293, 361, 410. Just has a very good ability, especially for a lower ranked prospect, um, to recognize a ball from a strike and get it. His his swing isn't always the best. And when he gets too long in his swing, he's not a good enough athlete to, to get the bat through the zone in time. So you've, he has to work mechanically on keeping stuff in. But he swings at good pitches. So if you can work on the swing a bit, keep the swing short, uh, and let him get into the zone and through the zone faster, you're going to have a guy that uh, hits well enough to contribute for you. Just doesn't have a ton of power. Uh, I think for you know for the size that he is, uh, you know six four two hundred. I think he's probably best suited in right field. He was an above average arm. I'd say he's probably an average arm now. Um, but moves pretty decently for that size, can play right field for you, um, and just, again, has to just get into the power more consistently. I think he's a fourth outfielder is probably the most likely outcome here, and uh, I believe he's a, he's a Rule 5 decision this year, so we'll see what happens, how they feel about him, if they decide to, um, to protect him or not, and it's wild that we're asking that question about a top 25 prospect, but that's the talent level of this system. We're looking at you know, 15th overall prospect in the system as is he a back of the rotation guy or reliever? We're looking at a 24 prospect in the system as is he even protected in the rule five? And that's just because the Padres have traded so many guys out. Last guy here I want to mention, uh, interesting player, 
because he's so unique. Kevin Copps, a right-hand pitcher, the reliever out of Arkansas, 2021 third rounder, six foot 200, and almost exclusively throws one pitch. It's just weird gyro spin cutter slash slider thing. Uh, throws it three-fourths of the time. You know it's coming. You still can't hit it. Has a curveball that's below average just to keep people honest. Has a changeup that's fringe to average that's just to keep people honest. But it's that slider. Um, pure reliever. Lives off that one pitch. I think he needs to th- reduce the walks a bit. I feel like he tries to keep guys... He tries to throw just enough uh, curveball and change to keep guys honest, but they're not always landing for strikes. So he's walking a little too many guys. 48 innings this year, 28 walks and 51 strikeouts. So a little too high from a, from a reliever for me. I think he'd probably already be up in the um, San Diego pin now if the walks weren't as bad. So somebody that I want to see fix that. And following up on yesterday's conversation with Tim Haggerty, we're, just a second, we're going to cover the AAA El Paso Chihuahuas as well as a couple recent call-ups to the big league team. Okay, so AAA, a couple interesting interesting prospects here with the El Paso Chihuahuas. Uh, first one, number 10 prospect in the system, Jay Groom. So 2016 first rounder by Boston out of, um, out of high school. Was actually moved this year in the Eric Hosmer trade. But big boy, 6'6", 250. And when he was taken 12th overall in 2016, he was that year's like number one prep pitching prospect. He was seen as... Top of the rotation, number one, number two type of guy. Had Tommy John in 2018. Missed all of 2018, almost all of 2019. Pandemic delayed 2020. Finally got back to baseball in 2021. Stuff hasn't completely come back. Uh, Fastballs low to mid 90s, can touch 95 or 96. He can throw it for for strikes in all four parts of the zone. Uh, It doesn't have a ton of spin to it. It's kind of straighter, kind of like a Hunter Green fastball. But hitters don't really seem to be able to see it out of the hand. So it's got some of the deception and it still gets some swings and misses. The control's there as well. Curveball used to be elite. We've got the curveball now as an average to above average pitch. Uh, Doesn't have that same like, like sudden bite to it at the end that it had. But still works. Sliders above average, changeup is average. He's good at throwing the changeup low in the zone. Uh, part of the issue here, I think we have with Jay Groom is in that time that he was off, he went from 220 to 250, and I don't think all of it was good weight. So um, stamina doesn't necessarily keep up in the game. He looks really good early in the game, later in the game not as much. Um, and then weirdly, it's got like a reverse, reverse split guy. Does a lot of good stuff against righties, not so much against lefties. Uh, I think he can be a back of the rotation starter. Might be a late inning reliever kind of guy. Just based off the, uh, the, the, the fastball slider with having a curveball and change to sprinkle in. Uh, but just somebody who, if you can get him back to full health, I think you can get a steal here. Uh, NJ Groom for Eric Hosmer, a guy who you tried to get rid of multiple times and you finally found somebody to take his contract. Go along with him, number 15 prospect in the system, Reese Nair, right-hand pitcher, uh, 6'2", 205. He was actually a 2018 20th rounder out of Fordham. Uh, kind of have him as a long reliever type. So something here where he's got a really good 1-2 pairing. He has a like a fastball, mid-90s. Uh, tons of spin to it, so looks really good there. Change up in the upper 80s, breaks horizontally, uh, plus pitch there, so good one-two, really aggressive mentality, but just doesn't necessarily have a third pitch. He had a cutter he was throwing a lot, it's not very good. Um, had a change up that when he, you know, with that change up, when he threw it a little too hard, it got destroyed. Um, working on a Curveball, trying to get that in there. The control's not great. So uh, I think if he ends up working out at the big league level, he's probably going to be a spot starter, long reliever kind of guy. I really do think at some point in time, you can take the fastball change up and you can try to make him to a a middle leverage to high leverage reliever. Um, But they're still trying him as a starter. Still trying to work it out. We'll see what happens. Rocking a 6.95 ERA right now. So... Hit and miss here. And then a couple guys who were just called up. We touched on them yesterday, but 
Uh, Luis Campusano, number one prospect in the system. And Eggy Rosario, number nine prospect in the system. So Campusano, 2017 second rounder out of high school. 5'11", 232. Was actually the very first pitcher taken in 2017. Um, Very athletic defender. He's getting better with framing. He's getting better with blocking, but he's got the physical tools to, you know, to, to, to get in front of a ball and stop it. Um, arm strength is pretty good. He's not as accurate with it as he needs to be, um, but they're working with him on that. The bat, I think, is what's going to carry him. He's a very strong hitter. He can hit um, to all fields, and he makes very, very co- like good quality contact, loud contact. Um, somebody who can bat fifth in your order, hit, can hit for average, can hit for power. Right now, 319 at-bats in the minors, 298, 363, 483 with 14 home runs. Um, just got called up. We'll kind of see what he what he does at the big league level. Again, not his first taste of, of big league action. We mentioned this in yesterday's show. He was up in 2021, 2020, struggled a bit. Back up this year, we'll see what he can do. And then Eggy Rosario is somebody who, uh, 2016 IFA, he's 5'9", 150. Not a very big guy, but uh, can do some decent work. So 293, 374, 520 in the minors with 21 home runs and 20 stolen bases. Um, Cannon of an arm in the infield. First thing we have to mention, utility infielder. He can play short, but um, can also play second or third. Um, Again, the arm is absolute cannon plus plus offensively he he's good at going gap to gap I feel like he can get the power 21 home runs but he's got to sell out a bit and pull a bit to do it uh, so you just it's just striking a good balance and especially in against major league pitching I'd be a little nervous about how he, like I'd, I'd want to tell him hey go up there don't worry about home runs make solid contact make quality contact um, don't try to do too much at once but um, again, a guy that really is here for defense, utility, can, I think, probably hit enough to stick around as a utility guy, but not as an everyday regular. I hope I'm wrong. I hope he does this, but I'm excited to see what happens. Um, Wild Week, If you, it's a long weekend. We do have a show on Monday. We have a mailbag on Monday, um, you know, but... Since you, if you don't have to work on Monday, go check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview for 2022. It's an eight-episode extravaganza that we did to get you ready for the NFL season. It's the local team experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, plus the betting analysis from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, combined into one Ultimate NFL Preview. So search for Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, and again, I'll be back on Monday with questions for the uh, from the mailbag. But until then, this has been Locked on MLB Prospects. Um.